Hello everybody, this is Satya Malik from LearnOpenCV.com. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use OpenCV in a Qt application. Now, I'm assuming that you have some knowledge of Qt, that you have built at least a Hello World application using Qt. This tutorial is for El Capitan, but you can trivially use this in Yosemite as well. For Linux and Windows users, I think there will be a ton of useful information as well. You can get access to the project file and all the source files used in this tutorial by subscribing to our newsletter at learnopencv.com. When you build a Qt application using OpenCV, there are things that you do in Qt, and then there are things that you do in OpenCV. The overlap happens when you want to display an image or a video on a Q object. We are going to build a very simple application that has one button and one display. You click on the button, it turns on the webcam. You click on it again, it turns off the webcam. And the video shows the live video feed from the webcam. There are a few different ways of using OpenCV with Qt. Our method involves PKG config. By default, Qt doesn't use PKG config. We will have to change some settings to tell it to use PKG config. To do this, we need to first find the location of PKG config on our system. And you can do this by saying which PKG config, and it will tell you the location. The default location is user local bin PKG config. And by default, this location is not in Qt's path. Now we need to put this location of PKG config in our path. So we go to projects, followed by expanding build environment. And right here, we have a, a variable called path. And you can see that it doesn't have user local bin. So we are going to add user local bin right here. Now, when it changes, you can see it right here. It says user local bin. And that is done to make sure that PKG config is in uh, its path. We also need to tell PKG config where to find the config file. And for that, we are going to search uh, for this this file called opencv.pc. Now, if you're using opencv2.4.x, you don't need this step. But if you have a system on which opencv and opencv3 are both installed, especially with uh, macOS X, if you have installed opencv and opencv3 using brew, then you need, definitely need this step. So we are going to find uh, the location of our opencv file, and you can see this is the path. We are going to copy this path and put this in a new variable called PKG config path. So we are going to add a variable called PKG config path and we are going to put that value that we just copied over here. So that's the path so that it uh, chooses OpenCV3. In case you do not have OpenCV installed on your machine, you can simply do it using brew. You can do brew install OpenCV3. On my machine, it's already installed. Uh, you could also install OpenCV package. So brew install OpenCV. I'm not going to do that. Finally, we can open our Qt test.pro. This is the project file for the project and then add these few lines right here. These lines tell Qt to use PKG config for OpenCV. So we have PKG config in the path. We have set the right OpenCV.pc file for PKG config to pick up. And we have to add these three lines in the project file. If we try to build this application, we are going to get an error. Let's try doing it. It says library not found lib IPPICV. This is a library that comes packaged with OpenCV3, but it's not in the right path. We can find the location of the library by finding inside user local seller. See, we found this. We are going to copy this path and we are going to put it in our project file. So minus capital L and now it is in the project file. We'll have to run QMake again and we can build, and this time the build will succeed. Okay, the build succeeded, 
but we have another error. If you look carefully here, it says something about symbol not found. Now that's a very specific uh, problem with Qt and El Capitan. To fix this problem, we need to go to projects and inside run, if we open the run environment settings, all we need to do is unset this dialib library path. So unset li dialib li library path and let's try compiling this again. It has already compiled and now it runs. Now let's see what the application does. It literally has two components. The first one is this white display and the second is this button. If we press the start button, whoa, hello. So you can see that the webcam just turned on and we can turn it off with this button. So it is just an on and off button and in this next part, we are going to learn how to make this happen. In the previous section, we learned how to set up OpenCV for a Qt application in OS X, uh, El Capitan, and Yosemite. However, the same learnings can be applied to Linux and Windows as well. The next section is very useful for all users because now we are going to learn how to write a class which can be used to display images and videos. For the purpose of this tutorial, we are going to demonstrate it on, on webcams, but you can use the same concept for images and videos as well. The display of our application is a class called CamViewer, and it extends QGraphicsView. Uh, some of you may know that QGraphicsView is a class that provides a widget to display QGraphics scene. Now, there are a few important things to notice in this uh, new class that we have written. There is a Q image, and there is a method for setting Q image, and there is a paint event. What we are going to do is, we are going to use OpenCV to read in an image. We are going to convert the image to Q image, and we are going to set the Q image, and we are going to do this again and again for a video. For an image, we don't need to do it. We can set it once, and this class is going to display. Now let's look at the CPP file corresponding to this class. As you can see that it's very simple. When you set an image, it sets the image and then it calls an update on the scene. When this method is called, the paint event is called. So whenever the scene gets updated, the paint event is called and inside the paint event, you can see that we are simply drawing onto the graphics view. As you can see, CamViewer is a very simple class. Now, how do we use it? Well, let's go into the UI, and inside this form, you can see that CamViewer right here, it is part of the central widget. So we have put CamViewer as part of the central widget. You can also see it in this uh, text view. So CamViewer is of a fixed size, and we have just put it there. Let's look at the main window of the application. This Again, it's very simple. We have a slot for push button. Whenever it is clicked, we are going to turn the camera on and off. And there is an update view slot as well. Uh, this update view is going to update the view every few seconds. So we have connected this thing, update view, to a timer. We'll come to that later. In addition, we have the video capture for our webcam capture. We have a frame which stores the current frame that was captured. This scene will be used for drawing, and we have pointed to the UI for this uh, UI form. Let's go back to the implementation. Now, as you can see, this part is really easy. When the push button is clicked, we are going to open the video. If it is closed, if it is open, then we close the video. That's it. And these are standard OpenCV open and close statements, see, uh, video release and video open. The cam ID is zero, which means that it will take the first webcam it can find. If your computer doesn't have the webcam, this application may crash. I'm not checking for it. Let's look at update view. Update view is called right here. We have a timer and the timer 
fires every 30 milliseconds. Whenever the timer fires, it updates the view. Inside update view, we are checking if the video is open. If it is not, then we simply return. If it is open, we grab a frame and we just set the frame to using set image method of uh, the cam viewer. And as you know, as soon as we set the image, it updates the scene and the paint event gets called and the frame is painted. If you're wondering how OpenCV Mat gets converted to Q image, the code is right here. Just before set image, we convert the frame to Q image and the syntax is pretty standard. The only thing you have to be careful about is you have to do this RGB swapped because OpenCV Mat is by default in BGR format and QImage is in RGB format. That is all I have to share for this presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and that it was useful. If you want to have access to the project file and all the source code used in this presentation, please head over to learnopencv.com and subscribe for our newsletter. With that, you will also receive a computer vision resource guide and a ton of other computer vision and machine learning code. Thank you so much for watching.